Our first speaker today is Joanna Bagniewska. She is a fame lover. She's spoken on TEDx. She's an excellent zoologist and science communicator. Please welcome to the stage, Joanna. Thank you very much for the introduction, Ines. Uh, I now realize that having a pencil skirt and high heels might not have been the best choice for this type of stage, but okay. Um, so, as you can probably tell from my complicated last name, I am Polish. I am a zoologist. I came to this country about 10 years ago and got myself a master's from this wonderful institution here, got myself a PhD like you do, and then like any good Polish immigrant, I proceeded to steal jobs. <laughs> And uh, when you're a zoologist, this is particularly uh, depressing because by me taking up a job, uh, I've basically stolen about 50% of the ones available. <laughs> so, um, so, I've been quite happy over the last few years working um, as a lecturer and a teaching fellow at various universities. Right now I am um, teaching at the University of Reading. Um, and, uh, and then Brexit happened, and I thought, oh, Great Britain, you're so great. I thought we had a deal. Um, I pay taxes, right? I'm, I'm a good model citizen. I don't litter on the streets, and I don't cause uh, riots and, and none of that. And, and you do this to me? This is... Uh, Taxation without representation and, uh, and about us without us and all of those big things. This is, this is how I felt uh, on uh, the, the night on the 23rd of June. Ironically, when Brexit happened, I was in Iceland on an Erasmus program. Erasmus is a, an, a European mobility program where researchers such as myself can go to different countries and exchange knowledge. So it's probably the last time I can go uh, on an Erasmus trip. Um, and uh, it was a very rude awakening the next day, not just because all the food that we were buying uh, became very, very expensive all of a sudden, um, but also it made us wonder about our futures. Um, mainly because we started worrying about where our grant money might start coming from. So, uh, I mean, there's of course the promise of 350 million uh, each, each week, um, but that has to be spent on NHS, so I don't know how much uh, of, of it will go into science. But just to put things in perspective, right now the European Union funds 42% of the cancer research in the UK. It funds over 50% of research in evolutionary biology in this country. It funds over 62% of um, nanotechnology research and over 94% of economic theory. Now, economic theory might not be that important, but, um, but what about all these other things? Where will the money for this research come from, I wonder and I fear. Um, so this is one thing that we grew concerned about. And the second thing is um, the actual mobility. And we often... Uh, have heard that um, maybe the UK would adopt a Swiss model as uh, so kind of belonging to the uh, EEA and then also being part of the grant programs um, from outside the European Union. However, there is a problem with that. So Switzerland uh, was a very happy member of the EEA and um, a receiver of grant programs such as Horizon 2020, and it was part of the Erasmus Plus Mobility program. And um, until 2014, when it decided to have a referendum on mobility and, and the free flow of people between countries, and it decided that there can't be a free flow between Switzerland and Croatia because of the influx of immigrants. And um, because of that, uh, and because of the lack of freedom of, of movement of the people, it was not able to ratify the Horizon 2020 funding program. And so this year, it will essentially be cut off. It has already be been cut off from the Erasmus program. And so because Switzerland is quite a rich country, they can pay through the nose for their mobility. I don't know if the UK is just as rich and if it's willing to do the same. Um, so the Swiss are paying twice as much as um, the rest of the Europeans to send their students and their staff uh, on academic exchanges. 
we'll see if the UK will follow the same route. Um, another thing that we started wondering about funding-wise is what will happen to all the private funders that will be joining in um, academia. So for instance, at the University of Reading, where I work, we're starting a doctoral training center for our young um, scientists. And we had a number of partner institutions involved in it. And one of them was a big funder, a Danish company, who promised us a lot of money, and we were very, very pleased with that. Unfortunately, the day after Brexit, they said, ah, we are actually not going to do it because we don't know what's going to happen with you guys, so we might go and put our money somewhere else. Um, so the doctoral students at Reading have just been hit quite hard with this news. Another thing is, if you think about it, um, when you look at the grants that are currently given out, we are very lucky in that we um, can get together with researchers from other countries and um, they cannot recruit the people from Saudi Arabia and Malaysia and all these other countries because the funding criteria are not being matched. So, um, because of that, the university uh, actually can suffer from quite big financial losses because international students from outside the EU would bring a lot of money. Now, students from the European Union are likely to also choose places such as Germany or uh, Sweden or Holland where you can learn in English uh, for a fraction of the price. In Germany, it's actually free and the living costs are much cheaper than, than the UK. Um, I actually asked my students whether they ever considered going to uh, one of those lands abroad where dragons live and polar bears walk on the street. Um, they said no, but actually right now, for a PhD, they might consider doing that. Because, well, for the next two years, anyone who started a PhD already will probably be fine. If you're an undergraduate finishing next year and planning a project for the next three or four years after that, things might be a bit tricky. So they're thinking that maybe it will be more worthwhile to go somewhere abroad where you actually get looked after. It might then also turn out that, that you might not want British students, um, but we'll see, we'll see. So, um, I normally do stand-up comedy, but there is not many funny aspects of, of Brexit, at least in my opinion. So I'm standing here and just waiting to be deported. Um, and every time I meet a researcher from France or Italy or Germany, we give each other a Brexit high five and promise to send each other parcels in the jail cell in the, in the airport. Um, but, uh, oh, you're not even laughing. <laughs> Especially the three people who raised their hand at the beginning, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, we'll, we'll see each other at that cell. Um, but, uh, so, so rather than, than being a cheerful stand-up number, this has turned into a rant about Brexit. Uh, so I apologise for that, but the last few weeks of my life have not been very rosy. So, um, yes, hopefully, fingers crossed, not much will change, but we'll see. Thank you.